Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. First up, the wild ride continues. Stocks rallied again today. The Dow up 331 points. Now, add that to yesterday's jump, and that's a total of 546 points, the biggest two-day surge in five years. So what is leading this charge? Well, analysts point to three factors. First of all, Citigroup's $7.5 billion cash injection from Abu Dhabi, the drop in oil is down almost four bucks today to $90 a barrel, and some hints today that the Federal Reserve's number two man, Donald Cohn, uh, of a possible rate cut. Now, speaking before the Council on Foreign Relations, he said the following, quote, uncertainties about the economic outlook are unusually high right now. In my view, these uncertainties require flexible and pragmatic policymaking. Nimble is the adjective I used, which means a lot of folks think he might want to cut rates. So what's behind today's rally? Joining me, Meredith Whitney of CIBC World Markets, about whom a lot more in just a second, David Widener from Market Watch, and John Layfield of Fox Business. And joining us from Stanford, Connecticut, Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof. There is Peter. But Meredith, first to you, really the star of the show right now, Citigroup. City uh, you were the one who downgraded Citigroup at a critical time. Some people say that your downgrade was partially re responsible for Charles Prince leaving his job as the chief. Do you see it that way? I, I don't know. It was a sort of another nail in the coffin. There was a lot that was wrong. I think what our report did was we laid out the case so clearly of what went wrong under his rule, so to speak. Um, you know, a lot of people blame the problems with City on Sandy Weil and mm. you know, his he, predecessor. His predecessor and City under Chuck Prince's watch got into a situation where they were so thinly capitalized that they really risked the future of the bank. And that was because Chuck Prince bought $26 billion worth of deals. Um, he didn't grow the capital base. He didn't grow the earnings base. He ballooned the balance sheet. And that's just gross mismanagement by a bank. And Do so you think he had the access to all the information that you had access to so he could have seen all these problems while he was in the top chair? He, I think he had access to even more information than I have. So there was no excuse. He's putting the information out and if uh, and the fact that uh, our, my report was so controversial I just used the numbers that were publicly available and stated issues that should have been focused on. You know the last down cycle, the last big down cycle for the banks. No one really wanted to talk about this. Is John Reed, who was chairman at the time, didn't want to talk about Citi's balance sheet. Mm. And at the time, Citi got into a very tight bind and had to have a cash infusion from Prince, Prince Alawid. So, you know, for the same reasons, we're Citi, we're a global bank, we have our two, over two trillion in assets. Should we not pay attention to your balance sheet? Are you no longer a bank? Yeah. It's, it's as if they expected different rules to apply to them. Your report came out October 31st, Halloween. Uh, no coincidence there, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> but Charles Prince was gone in a couple of days. And look what's happened since. The stock has gone down a lot, billions and billions of dollars in market capitalization lost. Is that deserved, the, the market cap that's been lost? There's no doubt about it. Uh, what will happen is um, that City will trade off of two factors. City really isn't trading as if something really bad is going on. I know the stock has come down mm -hmm. quite a bit, but if you look at the earnings run rate, City is the most expensive bank out there. So I have City's earnings rate, uh, run rate trade, you know, pegged at about three dollars and twenty-five cents for next year. I think it still could still go lower. So mm -hmm. if you look at the price of City at thirty-two dollars, that's a ten times multiple. Most banks are trading at nine times multiples, and they're far better capitalized than City. So estimates have to come down for City. Then the next part of the story is City is in a precarious funding base, so they're going to have to issue more equity to shore up their funding. That's another diluted uh, venture. So yesterday when they got, um, or two days ago when they got the infusion from Abu Dhabi, that was seven and a half billion. We estimate that they still need to raise over 25 billion in additional Whoa. capital. So shareholders sat on, you know, Monday, uh, Tuesday and, and today with 5% minimum dilution. Now the interesting thing about the Abu Dhabi deal is the Abu Dhabi deal investors, you know, wouldn't we all love to get an 11% coupon and also the option to reprice the stock that we bought uh, what's called a look back. Let's let's be more specific okay. about it. What happens is they gave seven and a half billion, but they get 11% a year 
And if 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 the stock is above 37, it's now trading what? It 32. 32. Okay. So if it's above 37 after a couple of years, then they get get it at 37. Right. So they still get a bargain. But if it's below, they get to then, renegotiate. They get to renegotiate right. their deal. So and, and if City deferred. defaults, they lose it all. Yeah, and it's but there's. City's too big to fail, truly, but it's not too big to break up, and it's certainly not too big to um, cut their dividend. And you, also interesting, this was seven and a half billion dollars. Their total dividend payment um, is over ten billion dollars. Couldn't they have just cut the dividend and not diluted shareholders? Well, why didn't they do that? I don't know. I think that the board is so shamefully out of touch with the right thing to do for shareholders and um, you know my mom's a shareholder my husband's a shareholder it's uh, there are a lot of you know good people hard-working people who have lost a lot of money owning the, these, these All right, shares. let's move it around a little bit so David what do you think could it have been done in a cheaper way for a city if they had just cut their dividend a little bit rather than giving 11 percent a year to Abu Dhabi absolutely but you know I, I have to have some sympathy for the board of directors I mean a lot of people own Citigroup for the dividend, and you know what kind of crisis of confidence would it trigger if they start cutting this dividend? I think people. But according would to Meredith, the they stock. need they need twenty billion dollars or more than they than they got from the Abu Dhabis. And they're borrowing at eleven percent to pay it seven percent. That math doesn't work out so well. Well, I I totally agree. I think that it probably eventually is is going to have to be done. But I also think that you know there is a reason why they're trying to hold on to the dividend, and they don't want the stock to go down to 20. They don't want it to go down to 17. Well, look, when Freddie Mac uh, cut their dividend, uh, to, you know, yesterday today, the stock went it's up, up 14 percent. Right. right. So uh, it, it does, the stock doesn't necessarily have to go down. I think the stock would have rallied more. You know, yesterday the stock was well after the deal was announced, the stock ended up roughly flat. Mm. And I would say that the city's stock move today is more tied to the mar general market. Um, but I think the stock would go up a lot, have gone up a lot more had they just cut the dividend. Well, as bleak as your prognosis is, we have somebody who I think has an even bleaker prognosis, Peter Schiff. Now, Meredith said that uh, there's no way City is going to go under, it's going to default on this, but you think that is a possibility, right? Who knows? I mean, there's going to be a lot of, I think, some bankruptcies by the time it's all over. You know, if anybody owns City shares for the dividend, I mean, it's not even that great a dividend. They should sell now while there's still over $30 a share and invest the money abroad. You know, there's a lot of stocks outside the United States that are in sound currencies that are appreciating where the dividend yields are more than twice what you can get on City, even at this price.